Hey everybody, Mutton Chop Gamer here. Uh, listen, because I had two tests today, the newest review might be a little bit late. Yeah. So, anyways, it will be up before this Sunday, I can guarantee you that. But in the meantime, uh, let me give you a little bit of filler about what I like to do in Spore. Now, this is what I like to call random creation. Now, what is random creation? Well, it's basically just what I said it was. Now, here's just a quick example. I have a random number, number generator up here, uh, random.org. And the first thing I do is minimum 1, maximum 10. And I just got 7, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this is the body I'll be using. Now, because I have the creepy and cute parts pack, that gives me a total of 13 rows. So, let's give me 13 rows. Okay, so I get the 8 row. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, it's going to be somewhere in this area. Now, there's four different columns. So, which column am I going to pick? Well, that gives me three. So, it's going to be this one. Now, where does the challenge come in in this? You have to figure out where each and every body part is going to go on this thing. You don't get to tell anyone what the body part, like the body parts aren't told. You don't get to pick it. And you have to just figure out the shape and how it's going to fit on the body. And you can do this any way you want. I'm just showing you how I do it to add a little bit of flair and creativity and to spore. Now there's a total of nine rows of eyes and every creature has to have eyes for it to be worth a dang. So let's make the maximum nine in the number generator. It's gonna be in the second row. And what column is it going to be in? Well, it's gonna be in the first column. So it's going to have bug eyes or the larva eyes. So I could have three eyes right here and you know what, I think I'm gonna do that. I think that looks okay. Next up, I'm going to add one of these random senses here. So I'm going to have hearing, smelling, I don't know. Let's find out what it's going to be. So it's four by four. Let's figure out what I'm going to get. Going to be in the third row, first column. And so I get hear bears. I'm going to stick those onto the ear over here. Looks kind of cute like that. Let me rotate the ears a little bit so they're like that. And uh, let's see what they look like longer. Let's put them back over there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, now for the arms, what I like to do here, because the two pages are equal, I just do one or two. One for the first page, two for the second page. So I just got a one for the first page, and then I do three to figure out which row, and I got the second row, and then which column, got the third column. So I'm going to have these scrappy arms. Now, these arms are a little too big and bulky for this kind of creature. So I'm just going to thin them down a bit. I don't imagine this creature to be very big and muscular. I imagine him a bit more lanky. Okay, so we have that. Now, it's going to be more or less the exact same thing for the legs. And why did I do that? Uh, hold on. Right click, or open, close tab. I accidentally closed my window when I meant to minimize it. So, uh, yeah, that's a thing that can happen. Don't do that. So, first page, okay, and which row? Third row. And which column? Fourth column. So that's going to give me some pretty weird looking legs here. But, you know what, they actually kind of fit in rather nicely. So, yeah, uh, you know what, I think they're connected to the body right there. That's pretty good. Now, let's figure out the hands. There's a total of ten rows of hands, so let's make that the current maximum. And that means it's going to be seven. So where it's going to be one of these hands around here. And so it could have some pretty dang good hands, I think. Uh, what's the maximum? Scratch that. It's going to have lobster hands. Okay, then. Okay. Well, uh, hmm. I'm going to shrink them down a little bit because, yeah, it didn't look quite right. Anyway, I can twist them and just do this, something like that. Okay, good. So now I have them twisted just a little bit. And now let's figure out the uh, feet. There's a total of 11 rows of feet. Maximum set to 11. So now it's going to be at the ninth row. And so that means we're going to be in the creepy, and cute pit car uh, the creepy and Cute Parts Pack page. And now, which column are we going to have exactly? Uh, we have the first column. So that means we're going to have these... Q 
cutesy whatever feet. Mickey Mouse feet. Yeah, let's shrink them down a little bit. What do they look like longer? You know what? I kind of like them longer. <laughs> Makes it look like I have little clown feet. Now, I don't want my creature to be completely defensive, defenseless, with two bite and one charge. I mean, frankly, that's not really a good means for success. So, we're going to pick a weapon. Maximum is going to be in the sixth row. And which column is it going to be in? The first column. So, it's going to have a bit of strike. In other words, it's only going to have one strike, making it almost entirely useless. Alright, since the feet are kind of well protected anyway, uh, let's make it so that these are barbs for the back of the feet, I think. Now, where's the thing that makes them point up? Okay, now move them down. And... Yeah, what else can we do with them? Uh, can we... Oh, nope, not that one. That one makes them fat. That one... Eh. Eh. Let's undo that. Okay. So yeah, I think these look pretty good like that. Now then, figuring out which of these extra little details it's going to have. So there's a total of 13, so let's figure out what row it's going to be in. Row 9, okay. And which column will it be in? Uh, it's going to be in column 3. So it's going to have these fins. Okay, I mean, it looks like a duck-billed dinosaur anyway, but... Uh, it's gonna look really weird anyway. Okay, let's move these things over a little bit and ooh, actually, I kinda rather like it being like that. Hmm. Make it longer. Those just twiddle them about a little bit. Yeah, now let's make it point down. No, no. Bad. No. We don't do things like that. You jerk. No! no! Well, these things don't like to agree with me. Uh, tell you what, we will uh, move these then, if you don't want to be right there. And, hmm, where do I want to put these then if they're not going to go on the head? I could put them on its butt. Nah. And the shoulders? How about right there on the back? Oh, yeah, I don't see any reason to not do it. So, yeah, let's do that then. And have it going... Like that, maybe? Kind of like shoulder spikes? Mm, bit cliche, but eh, I don't see why not. Adds a little bit of flair. Okay, now for the coloration. This is going to be one of the oddest parts of it. This is where we go back into the number generator. Which page shall the base be on? The page will be on... The base will be on page four. Now, what... No, now, what row and column will the base be? Will it be on the... Okay, it'll be on the first row. Which column? First column. So it's going to have that. Now I know what you're thinking. How are you going to pick the color? Well, I'll tell you. This is where the random generator goes at its most powerful with up to 16. So I just got 15. So I know it's going to have a pink base. But which color specifically? Minimum and maximum to 7. So it's going to be 2 down, 3 over. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. And I know what you're thinking. Mutton Chop Gamer, why would you do things like this? It's completely boring. Well, not really when you actually get into it. I mean, this actually makes Spore a lot more fun, to me at least, because you don't have control over the creature entirely, and that forces you to be a lot more creative. Like, back when I first started playing, I made dragon after dragon after dragon, and eventually I did get bored of it, but... Because I adopted this new method of doing it, it's not too bad. I mean, I can certainly think of worse things to do for it, but uh, it's really pretty good for me at least. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to have a yellow coat. And uh, what will be the color again? I mean, this will get you some uh, new replay value out of Spore. And I got four down, six over. And so, if anything, this can be considered almost a Nuzlocke. Heck, if you use a die when uh, playing the actual game itself to determine how you evolve and you can only change your or evolve again after you befriend or murder another group of animals when you evolve, that could be a fun way of doing it. Heck, 
And I might be doing that my own. Uh, something I've been considering doing is Spore Saturdays. But the only problem is that people will think I'm copying the game Gramps. Even though I kind of know how to play the game better than them. I mean, I've been playing since 2007. But uh, still, I honestly do believe that it would be a fun thing to do. So, you know, let me know in the comments when we have my new creature done here. And uh, we can decide on that ourselves. So now that we have that done, let's figure out what color it's going to be. 1 out of 16, what will the main color be? 10, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now, what major color will it be? It'll be 5 down, 4 over. So 5 down, 4 over. And this is our new creature. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a big fan of its color palette here. But hey, it's completely random for body placement and everything. We didn't do too bad. I mean, the creature certainly could have looked a whole lot worse, in my opinion. Let's figure out what we're going to name it, shall we? Okay, so what we have here is uh, Joters and... Ah, uh, crap, I forgot to bring it in, didn't I? Okay, uh, I will be right back with a, a little cutaway gag. But, uh, hold on a second. Okay, I am back. Okay, so uh, basically what I like to do is I use the random name thing that they give us, but uh, we don't want to have freaking Joders. No, 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 no. What we're going to do is I have this little cheat sheet here, and it assigns each letter to a different letter. It goes A is Z, B is Y, C is X, and so on until you get to Z equals A. So, for example, we're going to replace that J and replace it with a Q. Take the O, no, no, bad game. Replace the O with that, replace the A with a Z, replace the T with a G, E with a V, R with an I, and S is replaced with an H. With an H. Now, I know what you're thinking. How the heck are you supposed to pronounce that? Well, let's pull up that random number generator again with the five major vowels, A, E, I, O, U, each one assigned to a number. So the first one we got was five, that's gonna be a U. How convenient, so now we have Q, U. And since we have Q, U, we might as well just put another one in there so we can get the traditional English thing. Oh, it's another U. So, Q, so let's just move that over here then. So, Pulu's, let's get another one. A, E, I, so, ku lu ze give I don't like how it's just GV. Some things I'll sometimes let slide because they actually sound kind of cool, but uh, sometimes they just don't. So, here we have ku lu ze gave. So, ku lu ze gave. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty cool name. Welcome, ku lu ze gave, to my spore creation. And. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to take these challenges, go on and do it yourself. And uh, if you'd like me to do Spore Saturdays, where I do this completely all the way through the space stage, uh, just let me know in the comments, and I'll start doing that on Spore Saturdays. But uh, do major editing still, so we can still have Mutton Shop Game Reviews. Once again, the next Mutton Shop Game Reviews will be out before next week, but it's going to take a little bit of delay because of how long the video editing is going to take for it. So, yeah, thank you very much for being patient, and I will see you all next time.